Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel and in this video, I'm going to talk about Microsoft Defender Application Guard and how you can enable this capability in standalone mode. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video, we have discussed about Microsoft Defender Application Guard, how exactly it works, in which conditions a hyper V virtualized instance of a browser or an office app will be initiated. Whereas in this video, we'll talk about how to enable Microsoft Defender Application Guard in standalone mode, how to enable Microsoft Defender Application Guard for testing on a machine which has a very low hardware configuration, and how to check event logs in terms of the behavior that is observed with respect to Microsoft Defender Application Guard. Now, when we talk about some of the details related to standalone mode, the supported OS versions are Windows and Enterprise Edition, version 1709 or above. Then it is also supported in Windows 10 Pro Edition version 1803 or above, as well as Windows 11. The purpose of standalone mode is to just get an experience to be very precise because this is where the user has to manually launch uh, a virtualized container instance of Edge. And practically speaking, if you give this privilege to users, nobody is going to use it or nobody is going to purposefully launch it until and unless they know the purpose behind this capability. So practically speaking, the exact use case of standalone mode is just to get the experience, is just to check how this capability is going to work, what are the components required, whether there will be performance issues or not, or it can be used by your security researchers just to check the behavior of a malicious URL. Now, when it comes to limitations, this mode is not managed by any policy or control. That means I cannot have a policy in place wherein I will be defining a circle of trust. And then if any resource which is accessed by user, it does not belong to my circle of trust, a Hyper-V virtualized instance should be launched. This kind of controls are only available in enterprise mode. You cannot define trusted site list as well. This is exactly what I have explained. And then user has to manually open the application guard window to access sites, which can be malicious. So if you will keep all these things in mind, you can understand the purpose of standalone mode is just to get the experience or it's just to know how the product is going to behave. All this feature can be used by security researchers. Now, when it comes to methods available, the first one is GUI method itself. You can just go to control panel and install Windows features of Microsoft Defender Application Guard. Wherever you see MDAG, it means Microsoft Defender Application Guard. But when it comes to the old naming convention, you might also see Windows Defender Application Guard. But as of now, the current name is Microsoft Defender Application Guard. Now, with the GUI, you will be only able to install once you meet the hardware configuration. That means once the PC has four core of processors and once it has, let's say, 8 GB of RAM, then only you will be able to install from GUI. But when we talk about PowerShell, you can install it. But unfortunately, the feature is not going to work because the hardware requirements have not been met. OK, when it comes to supported platforms or supported applications, it is supported in Edge, IE, Chrome, Firefox and Microsoft Office 365 rich client applications. But for Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox, you need extensions to be installed. In fact, there is one more component which is required with extension. I will be covering this in a lot more detail when we will talk about Microsoft Defender Application Guard extension itself. OK, from hardware requirement perspective, minimum four cores are required in a virtualized environment or let's say typically existing on the machine itself the processor which exists and from a memory perspective 8 gb of ram is required now there is a very specific reason why it is mentioned over here which is solid state disk because if your machine is not having better compute power or let's say it's it does not have a better hardware configuration then there will be performance issues and this is something which i have also seen now if i talk about enablement this is the option where you have to go which is inside turn off windows feature on and off wherein this option would be grayed out if your machine does not meet the hardware requirements listed in the last deck okay which is four cores of cpu or processor at least and 8 gb of ram now practically speaking for all uh, obvious reasons 
currently there are some of scenarios which are not supported likewise running mdag in vms or in vdi environment but for testing purpose for sure you can enable microsoft defender application guard in vm by enabling nested virtualization on the host so if your machine has nested virtualization enabled for example then you can test this capability and this is exactly what i will be doing so in my host what i'll do i'll run this command to make sure the exposed virtualization option is set to true this is something which i will be showing you as well but just for your information so that this feature of nested virtualization gets enabled and then i'll add couple of registries to make sure i force the installation of microsoft defender application guard with relatively low hardware configuration around 5 gb of ram and only two cores of processors and then i'll demonstrate that how exactly this feature is going to work and how user can manually launch an instance or a virtualized instance of edge okay so now i'm going to switch to my machine where i will be showing you this end-to-end and I'll show you how this feature can be enabled. So this is my VM where I will be installing Microsoft Defender Application Guard. And I'll show you how you can enable it on a VM which is having relatively less hardware configuration. So I'm running this command which is get hyphen VM processor which is MDAG. And MDAG is the name of my VM. And then there is a property which is enabling or exposing virtualization extension this has to be set to true if it is not set to true for your in your vm then go ahead and set that to true and as we know that the minimum processor requirement for mdag to work or microsoft defender application got to work is four but as of now this machine has only three cores to be very precise this is two one h2 edition of windows 10 build 19044 now I'll show you the RAM which exists on this particular VM. It's around 5 GB. If I talk about the requirements, it's around 8 GB. So make sure when you use this feature for your production environment, apply this feature only to those machines which are having RAM more than 8 GB. Okay. Now if I'll show you the edge, I'm not getting that option of launching a virtualized instance of edge because as of now microsoft defender application guard is not enabled for this vm now i have launched control panel and i've clicked on this option of turn windows feature on and off and as you can see i'm getting the same set of information which i was showing you in a snip in the deck itself as of now microsoft defender application guard option was disabled now i'll go ahead and open registry and here I have to create two different registries which will force the installation of Microsoft Defender Application Guard. And the location is HKLM Software Microsoft and then HVSI. Now, since there are two different components which are responsible, the first one is the processor count itself. So for that, I'm going to add a D word value and now I'm going to type spec required processor count yes this is the name that you have to mention so that you know you can force the installation of microsoft defender application guard and this machine has three so for the safer side i'm mentioning two which means if two core processor exist then microsoft defender application guard should be installed now the next one is again related to the memory so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type spec required memory in GB. Now, if you guys remember on this machine, we have around 5 GB of RAM. It's precisely 4.88. So what I'll do, I'll customize this value so that my value is lesser than the value which actually exists. So let's mention three over here. Now, what does it mean that if I'll go ahead and now try to install Microsoft Defender Application Guard, you can see it's no longer grayed out. So I'll select this option. I'll click on OK. And then in order to enable this particular feature, a restart is required. So once this feature will be completely installed, the machine will be restarted. Now, once the machine gets restarted i'll resume the video again it is going to take a couple of minutes depending upon the hardware configuration of your machine 
So now my machine is restarted and I'm going to launch Edge. And now if I'll click on the menu option, I must get the option to launch a virtualized instance of the browser. Now, before I go ahead and launch the virtualized instance, let me open the task manager so that I can show you the new entry, which is coming for uh, the virtualized instance itself. And as you can see, now I'm getting this option of new application guard window. The moment I'll click on this, you can see a new entry coming, which is Microsoft Defender Application Guard Manager RDP Client. Okay, so this is basically a containerized instance of Microsoft Edge. As well as if you will look near the address bar, there is a specific icon which says this is an application guard window. That means this is a containerized instance, but in, it has been isolated by the entire OS. Now, once you will enable standalone mode, there will be two more registries. The first one is, is HVSI stand alone mode is enabled or not? And then save files to host enabled is enabled or not. Okay. So these are all different controls which can be implemented for the virtualized instance of Edge itself. If you guys remember, I was referring about cut, restricting the ability to cut, copy, paste or save files. These things can be covered in a lot more detail when we'll talk about enterprise mode, but this is how it is or this is how it works for standalone mode. Now, when it comes to events, what you can do, you can just open event viewer and go to this folder or go to the section of folders, which are typically starting with WDAG, which is WAD manager, policy evaluator, CSP, GP for group policy, and then WAD service. Now, depending upon the kind of issue you're working on or depending upon the kind of uh, capability that you're trying to check, you can go ahead and refer to these logs. Now, as you can see, since I've tried accessing www.office.com or portal.office.com, if I'll expand this application guard entry, you can see it is showing me the same virtualized instance of my edge where I have tried signing into office.com. So this is how this feature works end to end. Okay. I would suggest use a standalone mode to perform testing or to check the product capability. Or if you are a security researcher, you can use application guard window to check the behavior of a malicious URL. So this was all about knowing how Microsoft Defender application guard work in a standalone mode. What are the different set of registries that you have to make to make sure you can install Microsoft Defender Application Guard on a machine which has very low hardware configuration and how to check event logs in terms of the behavior which is related to Microsoft Defender Application Guard. Now, in the next video, I'm going to let you know how you can enable the same set of configuration but with the help of enterprise mode wherein a couple of other settings like defining circle of trust, making sure the sites are getting listed as trusted resources can be done, which is practically not available with standalone mode. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.